So in the previous video, we have derived this thing. Okay, C of QD, the expected total cost can be expressed as this. And then we need to do a first order derivative of if. Okay. We want to calculate this first order derivative. The key weapon that we need to use are the following. First, for f of q, its differentiation will become small f of q. Uh, because you know capital F is the integral of the small f. So this is the fundamental theorem of calculus. And also, um, let's see the ex then let's do this first. Uh, here, let's differentiate the first term by small q. This is a constant, okay, goes to here. And then for this particular term, we need to use the chain rule. So uh, q is cancelled, we have the second term. Or q remains there, and then we differentiate the second term into small f. So this term, after differentiation, becomes this. How about this guy? This guy is a function of q. When we differentiate it by q, we can see that, uh, so first, Nothing is in, in nothing inside the integral has q, and also the the lower bound has no q. So there is only an upper bound. And then by the Leibniz rule, we just need to plug in q into the integral. So that's why we get this. Okay. In general, uh, what you have is this one. Okay, if we are differentiating an integral, then in this basic form, all we need to do is to plug in g, uh, q into g of x, uh, and then that's it. And that's how we get this term. For the remaining, it's very similar. From here to here, for the first term, we get this. Okay, and the reason is clear. It's why we have this minus signs because q is at the lower bound. And finally, for this particular term, we can decompose it into this one again by the multiplication rule. Let's do some arithmetics and cancel many different terms on this and this cancel each other. And this and this cancel each other, we get this one. That's first order derivative. And then let's do it one more. The second order derivative capital F becomes small f, capital F becomes small f, and constant will be cancelled. So now, um, we can see that this should be a plus uh, instead of a minus. And then we have this particular format. Now, no matter what CU or CO, of course they are positive. Oh, sorry, this is, should be C O not C zero. Of course, they should be positive, right? And also for PDF or for likelihood, they must be non-negative. So the whole term here is positive. So we can say, oh, the cost, the expected cost is convex. Actually, this is very intuitive. When we order too few, there is a lot of overage uh, underage cost. When we order too many, there is a lot of overage cost. The best thing must be within some uh, at some balance point. Okay, we are not going to do extreme um, policies. We will try to make everything balanced. So it's very reasonable that the cost function would be something like this. Okay, uh, when Q becomes larger, we have a U shape uh, cost function. Okay, so anyway, uh, mathematically we have shown that this guy is convex. So if that's true, the optimal solution will satisfy the first order condition, like this, okay? And then we may re express this as this one or that one. Oh, here, we say they are implicit solutions. I cannot directly write Q star as a function of Cu and Co. However, I know there is one equation that must be satisfied by Q star. Okay, da, 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 like this. If I know f, I can express this one. Or oh, I can express the optimal solution like this. 
given some、um, very mild conditions, I can say such Q star will be unique, and then that's our optimal solution. Of course, we may want to verify that Q star are positive. Okay,、uh, of course, this is very easy to show. So, Q star will be optimal.、Uh, how we how do we say see that? This guy, this guy is of course positive. Okay, and we are talking about a probability. If we want a positive probability for capital D the demand to be smaller than the inventory level, then the inventory level must be positive. Okay, so that's the argument. So Q star is optimal, and then. Uh, we're going to call this Q star the news vendor quantity, just like in the EOQ model. The optimal quantity is called the EOQ. Here, the optimal quantity is called the news vendor quantity, and the whole model is called the news vendor model. It's not very surprising, right? Because we are talking about newspapers. The main motivation of this problem is the main example that fit. This、uh, model is news vendor or magazines. So this is the news vendor problem, and、uh, here Q star is the news vendor quantity. Finally,、uh, technically, please note that we are saying that D is continuous. That's why we may use those、uh, calculus techniques to derive the solution. If T is actually discrete,、uh, the whole method can still carry out, but. With other、um, algebra,、uh, other algebra systems. Okay, that's not a big deal. But、uh, to save some time, let's ignore it. Just remind yourself, if D is discrete, we can still handle it roughly with the same idea. Mathematically,、uh, we set D to be continuous to make the derivation easier and clearer. Let's do some interpretations first. Uh, when we want to minimize the expected color cost, the seller should intentionally create some shortage. Okay, and this is very intuitive. But mathematically, how do we see it? This, we know that f of q is the probability for d to be smaller than or equal to q. This is the probability. For we to have some left over because this is demand, this is inventory, okay. This is the probability to have some left over. So one minus f of q is the probability to have shortage. There is a positive probability for we to sell out everything in each day. Oh, we don't like shortage, but to optimize our decision, we must allow some probability for shortage. Even if we know the demand must be from zero to one hundred, if we want to optimize our, uh, minimize the expected cost, then of course we will not order one hundred units. That's not the、um, most efficient way. If you consider some other things, of course there may be some reasons for you to order more or order fewer or whatever, but. From the pure economic incentives we are talking about here, intentionally you will give some shortage. So <clears throat> the probability of having a shortage, one minus f of q, is decreasing in q. When you order more, the probability for you to have shortage, of course, will decrease. Also, we know the news vendor quantity q star satisfies this. So that means, given the probability. I can go right and find the intersection with the,、um, the, the 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 function here to get our Q star.、Oh, Q star satisfies one minus f of Q star equals this probability ratio. We can see that the optimal quantity Q star will decrease in C O and increase in C U.、So、let's try to see it. Suppose C U and、uh, sorry C O becomes larger. In that case, your、uh, ratio. What happened to your ratio? Your ratio will become closer to one. Okay, your ratio. In this case, in this case, your ratio will go up, and your quantity will become smaller. Or if C U is increasing, this ratio, this ratio will go down, and you will order more. 
Does that make sense? If your overage cost becomes higher, then you hate overage. Then you will uh, when you hold average hate average when you hate overage, you will decrease your ordering quantity. Okay, so that there is a fewer probability for you to have overage. Or if we are having a larger underage cost, then we want to prevent underage, so we will order more. Okay, so that's. Um, the basic idea we get from here. So let's try to solve some numerical examples. Suppose for a news vendor, the unit pr purchasing cost is five dollars, the unit retail price is fifteen dollars, and the demand is uniformly distributed between twenty and fifty. Or uniformly distributed between twenty to fifty. Now we can use our formula to say the average cost. Now it's five dollars, and the underage cost is ten dollars. What does that mean? For each unit of leftover, we paid five dollars, but that does not create any value to us. So if we can order one unit less, we will earn five dollars. Or for underage, the sales margin is ten dollars. So if we can, when we have a shortage, when we have a lost sales. If we can order one unit more, we can earn ten dollars. That's our average cost. And then, when we talk about optimal order quantities, <coughs> mathematically, all we need to do is to plug in Q star into this expression and try to make it equal to fifteen over five. Here we have something here. One is one. Okay, so I'm saying that f of Q. Will be fifty minus twenty as the denominator, and the q minus twenty as the numerator. Oh, why? The PDF is here. Oh, this is twenty. This is fifty. And the given any quantity q, I'm asking, what's the probability for having a short uh, having uh, enough? So the probability is here. I'm asking what's the area of this particular、uh, rectangle. I know、uh, the PDF will be one over thirty. Okay, fifty minus twenty as the denominator, and then for numerator, I will use Q minus twenty. Okay, so this is how I get this particular expression.、Uh, if you need,、uh, please review your probability or statistics. After this, oh.、Uh, Simple algebra tells us that Q star is four hundred forty. We can do some more analysis. Suppose the unit purchasing cost decreases to four dollar. Okay, originally is five, now becomes four. Then what will we need is that a quantity should satisfy this new equation. Oh, the right hand side becomes four over fifteen. And then if we really solve it, we can see that Q star star becomes forty two. Which is two units larger than the before, so that means when the purchasing cost decreases, okay, on the when the purchasing cost decreases, we will allow more possibility for un、uh, overstocking, right? Oh, the 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 the, the, the purchasing cost decreases, and that that directly means the overage cost becomes smaller, so we prefer overstocking more, okay. So that's why we will buy more. Let's do another example. Suppose the unit purchasing cost is fifteen, unit retail price is twenty-one, and the unit savage value is one, and the demand is normally distributed between、uh, within、uh, with mean ninety and the standard deviation twenty. So it would be something like this. This is zero. This is ninety. And the CDF、uh, PDF would be something like this. First, we still want to calculate average cost and underage cost. For average cost, here is fifteen minus one. For each unit of leftover, we lost fifteen dollars. But there is a savage value, so we actually lose fourteen units, fourteen dollars. 
For underage, it's still the difference between price and the cost, so it's 6. So the optimal order quantity should satisfy this particular expression. The probability for we to have um, the probability for D to be smaller than Q, or that means the probability for we to have um, left over should equal to this particular ratio. Okay, and then uh, if we want to solve it, we may do a transformation or standardization, normalization, standardization for the normal random variable. Okay. Uh, we may take the mean and the standard deviation, and within this probability function, uh, we can subtract 90 from each side, and then divide each side by 20. And then we will get the expression at the right-hand side. Uh, if z is a normal distribution between uh, with mean 0 and the standard deviation 1, then these two expressions are actually identical. So now, we need to know what's the z value for we to have a probability 30% over a standard normal distribution. If we look at a probability table or use the software, we can see that the z value should be negative 0 0.5244. This will give us 30% as the probability. So that means this particular thing uh, should e satisfy this equality. And then Q star will be something like 79, uh, around 79 units. One thing to keep in mind is for this particular normal distribution, uh, we just mentioned to you that its mean is at 90. Okay? But our order quantity is just around 79. So the probability for we to satisfy all the consumers in each day will be less than one half. That means we want to reject more than half of the consumers in general. Okay? Uh, of course, this statement and the, the, the other statement is different. Uh, what's the truth is that for... Uh, for each day, there is a larger than one half probability to reject some consumers. Okay, but why do we see that? It's all of course because the purchasing cost is too high. So the cost is fifteen, and then the sales margin is just six dollars. Okay, so that means um, you really need to worry about overage. Once you have one unit left then it's a huge cost for you. So that's why you order fewer. Okay, so that's the end of the news vendor model. We in this video we talk about we finish the discussion about news vendor. Basically that's just again a trade-off between order overage and underage. Huh. Previously for EOQ is a trade-off between fixed cost and holding cost. Here, we are trading off between um, overage and underage. There are some mathematics require you to do probability and uh, very basic statistics. Okay? If you need, uh, please review that part for a while. There are some uh, calculus. Uh, again, uh, help yourself by do some reviews. We will still give you examples and the problems to, 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 to do practice uh, in the lectures. That's it. Okay, thank you.